Hurricane Milton is moving offshore, but we are getting a look at a lot of the devastation left behind. This vid view is from inside a restaurant in Fort Myers. You can see all that flood water reaching the top of the staircase in that restaurant. And check out this footage from our CBS partner in Tampa, WTSP. Rescues underway in clear water for people stuck with all that flooding. Look at that rescue crews rescuing that family there from their staircase. But I want you to look at this. This might be the most stunning sight we've seen so far. Here's a view up on top of the Tropicana Field in St. Petersburg, Florida. This is the home of the Tampa Bay Rays. The fabric that serves as a do as the domed roofs building. The do like the there's a dome on that building there. It as you can see has completely been ripped to shreds. The stadium had been hosting thousands of linemen and National Guard members as they prepared for this storm. But we've learned the staging area had already been relocated before the roof of that stadium was damaged. And hours before Milton made landfall, the storm's leading edge spawned tornadoes. This is on the east coast of Florida in St. Lucie County, where one of the facilities for the sheriff's office was completely destroyed. Unfortunately, we have learned four people so far killed in this county from those tornadoes. Milton also knocking out power to the entire state. Tampa traffic security cameras captured this footage of electricity flickering on and off shortly after the storm made landfall. Numerous people reported transformers blowing out as the storm kept lashing them. I want to send it now to a press conference with Florida Governor Ron uh, DeSantis. FPL substation on Fort Myers Beach right there, Ground Zero, was fine. They, they could have had people hooked up to power days later. Um, just the people's homes couldn't accept it because of the storm surge. So all that is going on, um, and we're, uh, we're, we're happy to have pre-staged those resources because I think it's really important that we'll be able to do. We're also assessing the need for things like points of distribution. We typically will set up these pods with water, food, tarps, things of that nature. Uh, I think we will be doing some pods. A lot of this is based on what the counties ask us for. But I also think you're probably going to see a lot of the stores and gas stations reopen very quickly. At least that's our hope. We're also looking at the damage that was done to the ports in Florida. East Coast, I don't think there was very much. Uh, if any, Port of Tampa seems like it's okay. Manatee, that remains to be seen. But bottom line is we got to keep bringing fuel into this state. I know there's a lot at, on the dock side still that can be brought out. We've got a million, 1.5 million gallons of diesel on hand that we can use for the state and to help replenish. And I think we've got about 1.1 million gallons of regular gasoline just in our arsenal. Uh, and then we've also deputized the Florida Highway Patrol to escort the fuel tankers with sirens to be able to get to all the gas stations to get filled. I think you're probably going to be okay on the east coast of Florida. Some of the places in the Tampa Bay area when there was evacuation, everyone was going to get gas and some people were filling up additional tanks in addition to what was in their car with the, with the gallon containers or whatever they have, which is fine, but just the demand was went through the roof. And so these guys ran out. We had enough fuel in the state. It's just they didn't have the delivery schedule to be able to replenish it immediately. So you had some that went out. So we've been doing this. I think we've done probably about 130 escorts with Florida Highway Patrol bringing this in. We'll continue to do that. So my hope is, is that there's minimal interruption with fuel on the backside of the storm. Uh, we've had a lot of people have been working very hard. I think as most of you know, we, um, we've been doing this now for uh, two and a half weeks from the time we declared the state of emergency before Hurricane Helene, and then in the aftermath of Helene, and then you know we work on Helene for a week in terms of the, the response and the recovery, and then we gotta do another state of emergency for, her, for Hurricane um, uh, Milton. And, uh, and, and it's just the way you go. So people have been working 24 seven, particularly on the west coast of Florida. We got a lot of first responders that have been working really hard. Uh, Kevin and his team, all of our state agencies get mobilized when we have these types of uh, events, and they've been working nonstop. So, so my hat's off to everybody that's worked hard. You know, unfortunately, we have the, the fatalities from this tornado here. We don't have confirmed reports of other fatalities throughout the rest of the state, but we may as, as the day goes on. My sense is that a lot of the people did leave 
who were in the evacuation zones. I know we had over 80,000 people staying in shelters. Uh, you had massive uh, heavy traffic on the interstates over the last several days leading up to the storm because I think people were deciding you know, to just uh, get out of Dodge. We also can say that uh, the storm did not produce the worst case scenario in terms of storm surge. Uh, if you remember about 24 hours ago, maybe 36 hours ago, the fear was a category four, strong four going into Tampa Bay, producing about 15 feet of storm surge. That's an area with Pinellas County Peninsula and then the surrounding areas in Hillsborough County that is very low lying, very susceptible uh, to storm surge. Uh, that did not end up happening. The storm did weaken before it hit, it hit land. Uh, and then it did bear further to the east and south of Tampa Bay. So I think a lot of what they had was the, the wind sucked water out of Tampa Bay. You did have storm surge in Sarasota, Venice, Charlotte Harbor, um, and all the way down the west coast of Florida, and, and some significant storm surge, but um, not to the worst case scenario of what we were looking at. I mean, for example, Helene, we had storm surge in Taylor County up in North Florida, uh, that was probably about 20 feet in, in places like uh, Deacon Beach and Horseshoe Beach, and and that that is the that is the real deal. I mean, it's we we have examples in American history where you've actually had a lot more than that 24, 25 feet. Mississippi, Texas, uh, Camille, some of those, but but to have 18 to 20, that's a big deal. So doesn't mean there's not going to be a lot of damage. Doesn't mean there's not going to be a lot we're going to have to contend with. But uh, just in terms of what we were prepped for. Uh, I think that we probably have an abundance of resources. My sense is we'll probably be able to release a lot of the search and rescue resources that we've had on hand uh, very soon and, uh, and then just get back to getting everybody back online with, with power, making sure the, the gasoline's flowing and everything. So all in all, everyone's done a good job up to this point. We've got a lot more work to do, and I'll let Kevin come in and say a few things. Thank you, Governor. Uh, you know, I, I think in this situation here um, where we're at, this, the strength of what happened here is organically um, our state mutual aid system. Uh, the very first group that was on hand here was a Palm Beach County Fire Rescue Search and Rescue Team. That's not even officially a part of our state eight team search and rescue team uh, system. Um, maybe we want to change that in the future and put them on that. But, uh, you know, that type three team, which is self-funded 100 percent by palm beach county fire rescue was the first ones in to this situation followed up by miami dade task force one and then ohio and virginia task force and again i think again that's just a strength of not just the state emergency response team and the state emergency response plan but also outside states helping states you know some some people were a little critical of the governor sending state uh, assets up to um up to north carolina but right here when we needed them we of course we got all those guys back but immediately, Virginia, Ohio, California, and other states from around the country had their assets right here. So, you know, this is one of those examples the sheriff was telling us about this when we were walking up. He was very grateful for those assets being in here so quickly. But uh, that's the strength of the state emergency response team, the state, emer state emergency response plan, and then the greater emergency management assistance compact that we pull from. So we're, we're not going anywhere. We're going to be here. This is the first day of many, many to come, probably over the next couple of years. Uh, again, it's going to take us a long time to get all the recovery done, but we're not going to let bureaucracy get in the way. We're going to get this done quickly, as quickly as we possibly can. So thank you, Governor, for your leadership. Do you want to maybe just give an update on what we think we're going to get from FEMA for debris oh, removal? Sure, yeah. So um, we're going to, obviously we're going to start getting back into the, in the debris uh, removal business. And, you know, we're going to supplement where we need to supplement, but we had a really good conversation with uh, Administrator Criswell, who is here in Florida and is actually on her way somewhere in this general direction. But um, she is uh, working with us on how we could get ensure that debris gets picked up quickly. How do we, and, and the right word is not incentivize it, but if you're in the private sector, it would be how do we incentivize haulers to get stuff picked up faster, bringing in people from around the country to get that done. We're also looking at potentially, again, a mutual aid effort where we may bring in some city and county um, assets that have uh, the claw trucks and the loader trucks from around the state of Florida and maybe even outside the state of Florida to help us get that stuff picked up. So again, she's very, very uh, 
helpful on getting those things done, making sure that we got everything that we need. We will be submitting, hopefully by this afternoon, now that we got post landfall and we got some data, we'll be submitting through the governor's signature uh, a major expedite, a major disaster expedited request so that we could get uh, those federal funds turned on and start looking for reimbursement. But again, we're not going to wait on the feds for reimbursement. We're going we're gonna to do what we need to do, do the right thing, get people in Floridians back on their feet. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, this whole debris, um, it's just, it's just, I mean, you had like in Pinellas, they didn't want to do the debris the, as fast because they weren't sure about the paperwork and about FEMA reimburse. And it's like, you know, you got to get the debris off. And these storms, because of the way it's done, really incentivizes it to go a lot longer with the debris. And sometimes the debris in these major storms is around for a year. And how ridiculous is that? So what Kevin's doing, uh, and I think the, the administration wants to work with us, is to, to, to let's align these incentives so we can get the job better. You'd think the private sector would do it so much better than government. Uh, at least that's what I would think. And yet on this debris after Helene, when we saw how much was there and we knew another storm was coming, we got all our Department of Transportation assets from Florida. I was We were bringing trucks in from all over the state that are doing their normal duties, and we surged them over to the, the barrier islands off the Gulf Coast of Florida, and we did like 3,000 uh, truckloads of debris, reduced the debris by 50% in 72 hours, So and we did round the clock. We had 24-7 shifts going, but that's a sense of urgency, so I just think that you know, that may be an extreme, like doing 24-7, but, I mean, you should be able to get the debris done earlier than that. So I'm hoping that they can do this in a way that's going to make sense so that we, the, con the, the local governments can bring their contractors in and, and clean up the debris. We'll see what the debris was left on this storm. Uh, I don't think we have a real good sense about how much compared to the other. I mean, I think the storm surge overall was not as high as the others, but... I also think it probably hit, the, the winds hit more of the Florida Peninsula on this. So I think in terms of tree damage, I think you're going to see a lot of that. And then, of course, you know, we had more tornadoes for, uh, for Milton than we did for Helene. So, so we'll see how all that shakes out. But I, I really think, you know, getting a better posture on how they do the debris reimbursements would make a lot of sense. And I think it would, it would move this process along a lot further. And, it's also just the morale thing. You get hit with a storm. Seeing debris is just a constant reminder that you got hit. When things get picked up, things look nice. People feel a lot better about it. So we got to get that. We got to make sure they get that job done. Okay. Do we have any questions? Yeah, Governor. Have you spoken with the White House? Anyone there about the response here? Yes, I spoke with the president this morning, um, and Kevin was on the phone with me. We were on. Uh, the administrator of FEMA was in the office with us in Tallahassee at the Emergency Operations Center, uh, and he said he wants to be helpful. And so if we have a request, he said send them his way, and he wants to help us get the job done. So I appreciate being able to collaborate across the federal, state, and local governments and work together to put the people first. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I think it's so, you know, you do have these tornadoes, the warnings, how many actually touch down is, is probably a different one. But I would say what I've seen so far is that St. Lucie had the most tornado damage of anyone I've seen. Do you agree that with your reports? Yeah, yeah, and we know that we had over 120 uh, tornado warnings statewide. It's probably going to be higher than that. Uh, all of those tornado confirmations come from the, your local weather forecasting office. Uh, so those individuals have come around and confirm all of those tornadoes. We we have four meteorologists that said that we had probably in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 radar indicated tornadoes. All that means that they see a debris signature in the circulation. But again, the weather forecasting offices of the National Weather Service will actually uh, verify those tornadoes. Excuse me. No, no, no. Statewide. Statewide. Yep. In the same area. Um, as our rescue team is still out there, this is a rescue mission. We're sifting through the debris. Um, they just recently, right before this uh, 
conference uh, located another victim, unfortunately. But again, we're going to continue through this. You know, we're so grateful that the governor sent down, this was during the storm, he sent down the National Guard. So while we're all hunkering down, trying to stay safe, these men and women are driving through the storm to get here, and they work throughout the night, and their actions 100% saved lives, saved our lives. I think well, I think that'll be assessed today. Um, I can tell you, whatever happened, had we not done what we did with that 72-hour project to take every truck in Florida and help these counties and these cities, you know, some of these contractors were doing the debris and then they left and went to North Carolina because they could make more money there, and then others were working like bankers' hours. And I'm just thinking to myself, how the hell is that something that's acceptable? And so we came in and we said, not only uh, are we going to send all these assets, it's going to be 24-7. So the first night we go there and the county, I think it was Pinellas, they didn't have it, the landfill open 24-7. So our guys cut the locks and we started doing And you had all these, not just the state trucks, you had private citizens with their Ford F-250 pickup trucks that were loading debris. Massive amounts in. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, we got to keep it going. Then the next night, there were two entrances, and they closed one of the entrances, and there were 300 cars in line. So we, we, we uh, somehow rigged that and opened that up. So, so this is just like, where's the sense of urgency? So it may be that this debris ended up not causing much more damage. But if it did cause more damage, I could tell you, had we not come in and did what we did, you would have had you would have had a lot more. And the thing is, is like, like I mean, I, I tell Kevin, I'm like, look, we want to be helpful, and we will be helpful. But but you know, the state's job is not to pick up the debris. Like that's the local community's responsibility. And so uh, this was an extraordinary circumstance where we came in and did it. And I think part of the reason, and I don't think that I think there was enough debris there that I don't think you could have gotten it all in two weeks, uh, realistically. But I mean, there clearly was not a sense of urgency after the first storm hit. And yes, we, we knew there may be another one. Then they said, well, just a rainstorm, maybe not, this and that. But then by last weekend, by like last Friday, we were looking at it and we're like, you know what, this, this, is, this is real. We got to be so serious about it. And then we did the executive order um, on Saturday. So, you know, I, but I definitely think we, we help things by doing that. Uh, and as of now, uh, I'm not sure about structural damage on any of the roads there. I'm going to go over to Siesta Key after this in Sarasota. That was kind of ground zero of where the surge came in. You know, we just repaired one of the roads uh, from Longbow Key up to Anna Maria. Do you know how that's fared? Have we gotten I, any reports? I have not, sir. So we did emergency repairs on that, got it back open. We'll see. We may have to do some more repairs on that. Uh, I think that there may have been some small bridges throughout the state that, that have some damage. The big bridges we have in the Tampa Bay area, uh, Gandhi, Howard Franklin, uh, I know Sunshine Skyway uh, is going to be open if it's not already. The other two are open. Courtney Campbell will be open as soon as they uh, move the debris and finish the debris removal. So all being told, you're going to have all those major uh, bridges uh, back open if they're not already. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis there giving an update on the rescue and recovery efforts going on across his state right now. What do we know? Three million people still without power across the state of Florida. Four people confirmed dead at this point, though that number is expected to rise. I want you to check out this drone video from Venice, Florida, about 20 miles away from Sarasota. Take a minute and look at that. Look at the destruction, the damage there in Venice, Florida. You can see the water line just coming up. It looks like there are some, still some flood waters there. Many of the waters coming up to people's homes. Look at the windows completely blown off and the roof of that building completely torn off from the high winds and the water there. That looks like it was really, really high waters there right next to the community. Looks like that bridge completely blown out. Looks like this is a community that is on the water, but so many of those little 
docks there for those boats were completely blown out with that huge storm surge in the area, up to 8 to 12 feet, we're told, at the highest spots in Florida. Now, we know that more than 3.4 million customers across the state are still without power. That's according to utility tracker poweroutage.us. Hillsborough County, with the most customers in the dark right now, over 511,000. And unfortunately, the effects from Hurricane Helene are also still keeping tens of thousands of folks in Georgia and North Carolina without power. We have Brian Garner from the command center with more on the situation in Florida. He is the senior director of communications for the Florida Power and Light Company. Thanks so much for being with us. What are the next steps here to get power back to the state or the region that you represent? Good morning, Liz, and good morning, everyone. Uh, Florida Power and Light serves approximately half the state of Florida, including the Sarasota area where the storm made landfall and Daytona Beach where your correspondent was, where it came out the other side. Approximately 1.8 million of our customers were impacted by this massive storm. The good news here, the investments we've made to make our grid stronger, to underground many of those power lines and to add smart grid technology along the grid, helped us to restore power to approximately 600,000 customers even as the storm was striking the state. We're now squarely focused on serving those 1.2 million who are still out of power and our men and women pre-positioned across the state are going to be doing just that, working around the clock. Yeah, I can imagine. What should people know in Florida if they see a downed power line in their street? I know people are going to be anxious to get to their homes to survey the damage, but if they see a downed power line, what should they do? I know there's a lot of curiosity out there. People want to go and survey the damage themselves, but I couldn't emphasize more strongly, please stay off the road, stay out of uh, floodwaters. If you see a downed power line, stay far away from it. Allow first responders, including the utility crews, space to do their job. Safety is our top priority, and we hope it's yours as well. All right, Brian Garner, thank you so much for that update for us. I know you're working hard to get the power back on. Sebring, Florida is right in the middle of all of this, and John Shoup joins us now on the phone. He's the mayor of that city. Mayor, what can you tell us about your early assessment in Sebring right now? It's not good, but it's pretty good. You know, it's been riding through the city, and we've got a lot of uh, tree damage, not major tree damage that I could see so far, but there's limbs uh, laying all over. Uh, I was, you know, we got pretty heavy winds, a lot I think this is a harder hurricane than what we've ever had. So, but it, we got some water issues, but that's being taken care of by our city crews. Um, and I think they're mainly busted pipes that trees pulled up uh, for residents and that stuff. But all in all, uh, we made it through. Power is out for the whole city, uh, but we're moving forward. I'm relieved to hear that level of, of confidence, at least, as you still gather information. There are power outages. Hopefully people, I know Floridians are used to these types of storms, and they've got their battery-powered radios, and perhaps they can hear you now. What is your guidance for people who are waking up and feeling as if, wait a minute, I think I made it through this thing, but I don't know about my neighbors and other people in town. What are you telling people to do this morning? Well, uh, we tell people to make sure you're safe first. Um, personal safety is it. And um, just to hunker down, I guess you'd say, and be careful. Don't go out on the roads. Our first responders are out there uh, assessing the damage. So if you don't have to travel, don't travel. Just to sightsee. Just stay home. Do check on your neighbors, especially we are an elderly community. And uh, please check on your neighbors if you're able to do that. If you're running a generator, make sure it's outside. Make sure you paint, turn your main power off uh, to the main power because if that comes back, it'll blow your ceiling fans off the, off the ceiling. So just be careful uh, what you're doing out there. And considering you do have a fair amount of elderly people in, in your town, what's your biggest concern right now? Um, our biggest concern is just being able to get to them. Uh, if there's, uh, you know, our 911 system is fully operational. And so if somebody does need help is to, to call that number. Uh, but that's the biggest thing is now that making sure the roads are clear so our first responders can get to wherever they need to get. All right. I hope you get nothing but good news today. I appreciate you waking up and filling us in on damage so far. Mayor John Shoup, thanks for your time. You got Thank you. You all take care. Floodwaters were up to the stairs in one beach restaurant in the town of Fort Myers. And this morning, more than half of the homes and businesses in the county where Fort Myers is, Lee County, have no power. 
Lee County is along the Gulf Coast there uh, in southwest Florida where Fort Myers and Cape Corral are. And we're going to bring in Fort Myers Mayor Kevin Anderson now for more on the situation. Uh, Mayor, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I see it's daylight there, a little bit of wind still in the area. What's your assessment of how the city has weathered the storm? First, I can just say my heart goes out to my colleagues across the state for dealing with uh, much more um, serious uh, destruction. Uh, I'm, I'm just very optimistic here because I expected for twice the amount of water that we received. So I'm very happy that it's only what it was. What's your biggest concern right now, Mr. Mayor? Getting the power back on, uh, getting downtown cleaned up, and getting these businesses back open. You know, Mayor, when you said you've got other concerns about other areas of Florida, I wonder, are you hearing things from other mayors or um, other counties? And what are you hearing? Who's hit, her, who's hit the worst? Yeah, I haven't heard from any of the other mayors yet. Uh, you, you know, I know they're busy. They got their hands full. I learned that two years ago with Ian. Uh, it's nice to get fun. <laughs> got work to do. So, you know, I'm worried about Sarasota and Tampa and those cities around there. And even the, the cities inland, like Orlando, that just aren't used to being hit by a hurricane. Mayor, we have talked to officials in other areas, and they have um, talked about the people that decided to hunker down and not leave and ride it out, as they like to call it. Um, do you believe that the people in your county got the message, um, the people in your area got the message? And if not, what is your advice to them? I think more people this time were smart and, and left than uh, I've seen in past storms. I think Helene and Ian were just good lessons for us. Uh, for those who still choose not to go, you know, you're taking a big risk because once those winds get so high, you know, 40, 45 miles an hour, you're on your own. The, the police, the fire, EMS, they all get pulled in for safety and they won't go back out until the winds go down. So you, you take a chance. Even if you have a simple medical condition incident, you, you're without the services of 911. Mayor Kevin Anderson, thank you so much for taking the time. We appreciate you and our thoughts and prayers are with the people in your area. Thank you very much. We're, you know, we're strong, we're resilient, we bounce back. That's yeah. right. Avon Park City Manager Danielle Kelly and Fire Chief Andy Marcy join me now with more. Thank you so much for being with us. Have you been able to assess the damages left behind by Milton yet? Yeah, we've been doing that this morning. We started that at uh, first line at 7 a.m. And we've been working up until these past few minutes looking at everything. Power lines, trees, assessing damage to people's homes, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we've started all that. And you can I see in the background here, we have a lot of, you know, tree debris that's down. We also have our local shuffle board roof facility collapse to the last night. Wow. So we're just uh, getting everything cleaned up. I've seen a lot of the residents out in town already piling up their tree debris on the side of the road. So what's priority one right now? What's the area of most concern? Well, we just want to make sure the citizens are safe. It seems like the community did real good and did everything they needed to be to you know stay home safe. But that's our first priority is people. But we also deal with like power, making sure that people aren't going to walk into power lines. We have a lot of power lines down. So right now we just want to tone those off to make sure nobody walks into a territory that's going to cause them any harm. Are you also yeah, we had we had water out last night for about eight hours. So that was our priority to get that back on for the citizens this morning. So at least they woke up to running water. We're looking at video there on your screen of folks having to get in boats just to get across the road there. These roads that are now rivers at this point. I feel free to kind of move your camera around for us so we can kind of see where you are and see the damage that you sustained there. Moving forward today into tomorrow, what do you think recovery efforts are going to look like at this point? Well, I'm not sure what the video was that you were showing of the flooded roadways. We, we don't have that problem here in Avon Park so much. We, uh, we have a lot of downed trees that need to get pushed to the side. We need to get the roadways, make sure they're all open for emergency vehicles. Uh, that's really our priority at this point. You're looking at video now. Now, this was a, it sounds like a community center where the roof kind of caved in there. Yes, and the sad thing is we just had that replaced maybe a month ago oh. from the last storm. 
heartbreaking. And and were you able to, do you know if most of the residents in Avon Park, where you are, do you know that most people got, were able to get out? I don't know that many people evacuated. Uh, we did have our community shelter open for those that were in modular type homes to hunker down in. Sure. Those folks in those mobile homes definitely at risk during storms like this. Danielle Kelly and Andy Marcy, thank you so much for being with us and for that compelling video. We continue our coverage of Hurricane Milton, which made landfall last night near Sarasota, Florida. First light this morning revealed substantial damage south of Tampa Bay. Joining us now from Sarasota is Republican Congressman. His name is Greg Stubbe. He lives in Sarasota and represents the region in Washington. Congressman Stubbe, thank you so much for joining us. I saw an yeah, amazing interview. Uh, we're glad you're here because there's lots to discuss. I saw an interesting interview with someone who lives in Sarasota. She said she lives on the third floor. She was worried about getting out. She lives a mile from the beach. That's how bad the water was. She said it looked like uh, white water rafting. When you, when you hear stories like that, I'm curious about what the conditions are now and what do you need now? Uh, conditions now, obviously, the, the storm surge has receded. Um, we cannot, locally, there's a bridge going out to Lido Key that's damaged. Uh, emergency responders have not been able to get to Lombo Key. It's my understanding there's a couple hundred people on both Lido and Lombo that uh, there's no access to them right now until some of these repairs are made. And that's that's why it is so important. I, I watched the mayor's interview before me, and, and he's right. Like, people have to heed these evacuation uh, orders because you have people like you're saying this person a, a mile from the beach that should have evacuated that didn't evacuate and if they if they need services uh, emergency responders can't get to them they just physically can't get to them so uh, a lot of people did evacuate this time because they saw the damage that we had with Hurricane Helene and saw the dam damage we had two years ago with her Hurricane Ian the heartbreaking thing about this for my district is we were literally recovering from Hurricane Helene. I was going and touring businesses that were ripping out drywall. I helped a family rip out drywall who were just flooded a little over a week ago, and those same areas got flooded again. Punta Gorda got flooded again. So those businesses and homes that were trying to rebound from Hurricane Helene just got flooded again, and it's, uh, it's heartbreaking to see that. Yeah, you certainly got a one-two punch, Congressman. So I'm curious about the resources that are available right now for people in your area. Do you have what you need? Yeah. Um, yes, um, 50,000 linemen are staged. So we, most of my counties, uh, most of my district does not have power. Cell towers are down. Communication is very bad. Um, so we've got 400 National Guard staged in Sarasota at Riverview High School. They've been activated. Now that the winds have died down, emergency responders can get to where they can get to. Linemen can get to where they can get to. But I will tell people, you're, it's going to take time uh, for power to get restored and for things to get back to normal because we have so many people without power. Uh, most people have got the, the, the things, food and water, that they needed before the storm hit. Um, but we have... National Guard, linemen, and everybody staged for people that, that need something quickly. Congressman, the, uh, the reality of, of hurricane coverage is that there's often a lag, sometimes a 12-hour lag, sometimes even more, before you really have a sense of who was hit the hardest and how bad it really is. What's your gut say right now about what we know of the current situation and what we're still waiting to find out? Yeah, we, so my district got hit with the eye. So the eye was from about like Siesta Key down to Venice. So we got the worst of the wind. Um, my, it, the eye went over my house, so it was blowing at 100 miles an hour north, and then you get to the eye, and then as the eye passes, it was blowing to 100 miles an hour to the south. So Sarasota probably got the highest wind damages. Uh, you saw 102 miles per hour that were recorded at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. South of us, though, got the worst of the storm surge. So Charlotte County, Punta Gorda, North Fort Myers, that area that had been flooded uh, during Hurricane Ian, and uh, Punta Gorda that was flooded in Hurricane Helene a couple weeks ago got flooded again. So there's going to be a lot of trees down, which means a lot of power lines down, which means it's going to take a while to get that power back. In Sarasota County, uh, in Charlotte County, they got much more of the storm surge on the coastal areas. We didn't see as much rain with this as we did with Hurricane Ian two years ago. Um, I actually, it's not as bad of flooding as we have seen with Debbie and some of the other storms recently. So that's a good thing. That, that means that our residents can at least get on the roadways and drive where they need to drive and get to where they need to get to. 
Congressman Greg Stubbe, thank you so much for joining us. Anytime. Thank you. Some of the biggest concern this morning, though, is for the city of Sarasota. Milton ran right into it after making landfall last night. Sarasota County Emergency Management Chief, her name is Sandra Tapafumine, joins us now with the latest there. Sandra, it's really good to see you. I know you've got a very full plate this morning. I'm curious if the storm was as bad as you expected and what are the current conditions in your place right now? Yeah, well, good morning. Thanks for having me on. Uh, so, you know, we, we did expect to get that up to 12 feet of storm surge. From our initial assessment, it looks like we may be closer to seven or eight feet of storm surge, uh, especially down in the Venice area and along our barrier islands. Uh, so maybe just a couple feet more than we got from Hurricane Helene just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so, so that's good news if we didn't get quite that much surge. We do have uh, a lot of uh, damage from just normal winds at that high wind speed and, of course, the normal power outages. We have teams that are out now clearing and assessing, uh, and so we're hoping to get more word back as they get out. Uh, we have a bridge that's damaged um, out to Lido Key, and so we're not able to get quite to Longboat Key just yet. Um, so there's still a lot of assessments going on. So, Sandra, one of the realities of covering a storm like this and then doing the work you do with a storm like this is you don't really know how bad it is uh, until many hours later because the hard-hit areas don't have the resources to even communicate in some cases. So I'm hoping to get a sense from you of your level of concern. How many areas do you know are generally okay, and how many areas are you still uh, holding your breath on? Yeah, so right now, I think Lido Key and Longboat Key, since we weren't able to get over to check on them, we do know that there was a couple hundred people that's Boat Key and uh, some also out at Lido. So we're concerned just because we can't get over to them just yet. Uh, we had some reports coming in over fire flooding along some of our creeks. Um, so, you know, we, there's still some areas and pockets that we're concerned about. I'm certainly glad that we didn't appear to have gotten as high of a storm surge, but uh, I think that's still going to be significant areas. It's going to take some time to get through all of them today. Um, but we're, we're, it's promising that we already have cleared a number of the areas across the county. And for those watching, we have a few glitches in the connection, but due to the storm, it's understandable. So, Sandra, um, have you heard from Search and Rescue? Uh, do you have any idea of the number of injuries or fatalities and what's going on? In the I'm county? so sorry. I think I may have lost you. Can you guys hear me? We can hear you. We can can you, hear you hear us, Sandra? We understand Hello? the storm is making it difficult for us to communicate with you. I think we might have lost Sandra. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. We appreciate her joining so us. So sorry, guys. I think we're lost. It's okay. Thank you for joining us. We get it. With the yes. storm, totally understandable. Uh, totally understandable. It's remarkable we can even uh, hear mm -hmm. her voice this morning. Yeah. Uh, Sa Sandra Tapfumine uh, out of uh, Sarasota. Appreciate your work and good luck to your crews. Uh, folks watching us right now, if you want to help the people of Florida recover from this disaster, our website has some very good information on how you can do that. All you have to do is go to our live blog on the hurricane, cbsnews.com slash Milton.